Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Haya here today with you as your hostess and we are back with another Voldemort video, a Psyker's Tale, Age of Strife. This was also, this was requested by Trash Boat, but I know this was requested by a lot of people as well. I'm not just finally getting around to it. So I'm very, very excited because whenever something is really like truly highly recommended is always a masterpiece um before we get into the video please be sure to like comment and subscribe okay and if you guys want to support the channel the link is down in the description box below or you become one of my patrons and i'll love you forever you know <laughs> um i'm very very excited to get into this be there or be square in for the book review on the 29th go on my discord if in the end of Vine, you'll know everything okay um yeah i'm very excited for this video so without further ado let's get right into the video okay oh man I, voldemort's intros The time, circa 26th millennium, age of strife. Mm. The following is a tale to illustrate the flavor of the events of those times only. I am the only living being on this ship. As it careens toward my home planet, I see the horror it has become through the view screens with ever more lurid detail as we close. The smell of my weapon's discharge, the burning corpse behind me, that was the captain. A man I liked. A man of honor. The warheads we launched are about to strike. I have only a few moments. But moments nonetheless. I know exactly what will happen. He forgets. We've played out this scenario before. It was so long ago now that his shadow self or that part of him that may still be alive. Even that has forgotten. But we have done this before, and I always win. That's why he put me in charge of the military machine when we gained one. We. <laughs> always we. Because he is, and always was, my best friend. For as long as I have memories, and this is my home. These are my people. But it has to end. I thought him more a twin. One I looked after. I always looked after him. But I get ahead of myself. I have moments to recall every detail so I can forgive myself. So I can reconvince myself it is necessary. So I can go through with it. I close my eyes for a moment. A sweet relief from the horrors I am witnessing. I throw my memory back. Back to that day when I walked into the captain's room after a shift. I outrank him. I am the admiral, of course. Commander of all of our armed forces. He hey. could not really refuse. He was preparing to rest, but opened the door and let me in. He was tired. But we were used to that. We had campaigned together for a decade or more, had grown to know each other, and he knew from the look in my eye, the haunted glance over my shoulder as I entered, that something was afoot. Without saying a word, he locked the door, walked to the drinks cabinet and poured two glasses of a thick, viscous golden liquor. He handed me a glass and just sat down. He looked up, motioned for me to take a seat then leaned forward to give me the visual cue that he was listening intently, all while rolling a long tug of the drink around his mouth, and a sign he was preparing for a long listening session. <laughs> As I said, we knew each other. Isn't that nice, though, to just, when you're so close with somebody, um, that they can tell what you're thinking, even though you've 
I mean, I mean, of course, body language, but when you could just look at somebody in an instant and just know something is up or something's wrong. I dropped my facade, the high shoulders, the straight back, the chin stuck out commandingly, and I sagged. The captain sat up in surprise, then went back into his chair to settle in and relax me more. It worked. I took a hearty draught and then it opened up. Have you seen the date? No, I didn't think so. I've kept everyone so busy, it's no wonder. But it's been on purpose, old friend. Please forgive me, but I needed more time. I wasn't sure why at first, but now my head is clear. I can see it all. Why? It has all fallen into place. The captain raised an eyebrow and nodded me on gently. You see, it's been so long since I've seen him that it's worn off. I can remember it all. Whatever he uses, used, to put those memories in a box away from my mind, it has worn off. I think I felt it in other ways. I think I always did. I always knew, really. The captain opened his hands wide, one still holding the drink, which he practically quaffed as a reaction to my outburst. So unlike me. I know, I know. I am not making sense yet, but I want to tell it all in one go, one pass. I want you to understand not only what I know, but how I know it, and how important it is. I have to get it off my chest as well, because I am going mad, and have viewed all of this too closely. Then perhaps you can tell me if I am wrong, if my urges are now so dire and doleful. The captain just nods. You know the propaganda, the truth, as we call it, the eternal light. He and I were born in humble background and rose to the leadership of our world through virtue, through wisdom, through diplomacy, and having the best, the very best, intentions for all. Well, this was a dream that we had from childhood. We both concocted it. I thought we had done just that. My first memory is of Josiah, all those years ago. We met at our first day in citizen instruction and development. He just beamed at me and asked me to smile. <laughs> and I did, broadly. We watched all the others introduce themselves, giggling at the same things. The round one. The one that could not say his name, but harmlessly. We just had the same sense of humor. As we got to know each other, we found out it ran so much deeper. Mm. We grew up together and were quickly inseparable. I was always the more martial one, being a good head above all the other children of our age. <laughs> Some much older, too. But he was of average height, wiry, but very bright. We both were. We outstripped everyone in our class within weeks, our year cohort in months, and the entire school within a year. We were promoted to further development early. Nice. When we reached the age of 11, I began to notice it. Josiah was trying less hard, but seeming to gain even more stellar results. I begrudged him nothing. But I was not one of our fan club. I saw him for what he was, unlike so many others. I just watched him as much as he watched me. So I worked it out. Whenever he took on a certain tone, everyone just did what he wanted. Mm. I saw him do it to one of the development mentors. He had been particularly lippy that day, and she had a face like thunder when he walked up to her. He spoke to her in that tone, and within seconds she was laughing. He sauntered off. Oh, others had noted it. But they also repeated his line that the educators and development mentors all fancied him. Thinking back, he had always just walked up to people and asked them to smile, which they always did. So, oh, Psyker's tail. So, I'm guessing he's a psych. I'm pretty sure Psykers have 
uh, mind control abilities. I need to get more. There, dude, there's so many factions I have to get more into. But I'm pretty sure um, they're all about mind, like, mind things. So I'm pretty sure it's just, like, mind control, telepathy. Like, hmm. I don't know. I'm getting... I feel like he's going to use it for bad in a way. Just this foreshadowing. I don't think this is going to end up... I don't think this is going to end up well. But let me get... Let me just wait. Wait and see. But I am loving this um, story so far. did it to me when we first met. Mm. Had he been practicing it, even back then, but perhaps not knowing it? But I had to let him know I knew. I acted out one day, getting myself more demerits than I'd received in a year. All were aghast, <laughs> especially Josiah. He just sat there in tears of laughter at first, as my flippancy was so brash. But I crossed so many lines. He ended up just gaping at me. Then he ended smirking and nodding. At the end of the session, everyone else trooped out giving me worried looks as the mentor stood, arms crossed and fuming, tapping his shoe against the floor, clearly about to explode when the bystanders were out of the blast zone. As the last non-combatant left the room, Joss just leaned over, looking me deep in the eye and said, I was wondering when you'd work it out. I'll get this one, but don't do it again. He then proceeded to address the mentor in that tone. Within a minute, he was standing there, amiably chatting with both of us. Joseph just said, You cannot remember the exact details of this session. You do remember, of course, that Tarnia and I excelled and were everything a good student should be. We challenged you, but in a way that made you proud and reaffirmed your decision to be a mentor. He then asked a mindless question, and the change was immediate. We sat and discussed it his gift. We discussed it through the night, through the next day. Oh, wow. If it were anyone but me, he would have been shy about it, but not with me. He actually bragged, because he knew I thought he was amazing, because I could never be jealous of my brother Joss. We tested it bit by bit, moment by moment, and it grew. He could soon bring the light as we called it, to groups. We discussed it, were ethical, knew it was a gift that should be researched, but not now, when mm. things were safer. Since the uprising, everything had changed. Everything. Man had to fight its own wars again, the first being against those terrible things that nearly took us out. The cybernetic revolt was, it nearly broke humanity. Our SDC is near gone. Our unity got us through. But the subsequent wars were often too much for some sectors. But we were fractured anyway. Storms in the ether were making transport increasingly difficult. Possible, but difficult. So out of this chaos, the Sirius Confederation and the Balmat hegemony were formed in our locality. Fifty-odd systems apiece. Us slap bang in the middle. Perpetually saber rattling and using our system as a border war playground. Rarely hitting us directly, but constantly on the nearby other bodies in our neighborhood. Our populace was seen as isolated. We had a fleet, but it was small and undergunned. We lived under the shadow of fear of either the Confederation or hegemony, or both, landing on our world. Our administrators were ineffective, venal, and cowardly. So Joseph and I made a pact. We would use his gift and my talents. We would bring the actual light to our world. Not for whim or prestige, but for the people. Our people. To unify them. So we could stand tall. Oh, I thought the music was going to turn dark. Small, our own connotation. We stood as joint running partners for civic responsibility. I don't know, in Warhammer, you, just ought to, you always have to be ready for a plot change to turn really, really grim dark. <laughs> Yeah, I got worried right there. We ran on a platform of hope, unity, and determination. We ignored all other points of discussion. 
and we took the highest percentage of the vote ever recorded. Joss went a bit mad at one rally and used the tone on everyone there. And it worked. But it only worked until after the election. Those who were at that particular rally then turned on us quite badly. Mm. They didn't know why they were disgruntled, but they just felt something was off and they were angry. Joss had to address them in small groups to regain their support. But regain it we did. We learned to be cautious. From there, we ran again and again, winning higher and higher positions as the extent of his talent and my popularity grew. He ran on civic, I ran on military and security. I had gained a lot of experience maintaining this specialization and had even served for a year while Joss was in artistic expression enhancement. Mm. Not learning how to cross speeches at all. The brains and the brawn. Flashed out into other abilities, his strength. Now, he could not only use the tone, he could read the thoughts of our rivals, those with a stranglehold on power. And so we climbed and climbed. We attempted again and again to enact unifying doctrines, processes, and results, but resisted by the old guard at every turn. Eventually, just found out the secret. Why? Most of them were cat's paws of the confederation or hegemony. They had been screwing over our people, our planet, our entire system, time and time again, just for personal profit and elevation. He was sickened. We both were. And the elections to the highest officers were always rigged. When you were inside the system, mm. you knew just how bad. So we looked at our options. They would never allow us to get onto the bill, the list of names. Never. We were radical, so they would always make certain we did not get the platform or attention for any media source. We could not get approval for high office by those who would never approve of us. So a vote was off. We could appeal to the masses using guerrilla media activity. We could create platforms and then expand the cause. But their counter message was all pervasive. Mm. We would need to use the tone on millions, and we knew it would not be possible yet. Not for long. Joss was not there yet, and our message would be quashed by the vested interests in the administration. Or we could gather a much smaller demograph, the all-important one. They already loved me. I presented well, had the look, but also worked hard, knew the ropes, was willing and able to get involved and stand up for them, but also discuss things nobody liked to discuss, like defending our world, our system, building up, getting ready for it, dishing out a few bloody noses. Our carefully crafted whispering campaign had built a lot of speed and traction for multiple years now. Adding to this the tone, it would not be child's play, but we calculated we had access to enough forces to do it if we led well, meaning if I led well. Joss had no head for tactics, not of this form, never did. And so we did it. We toured some of the most populous and important bases and prepared our army. On the day of the latest set of no real choice elections, we struck. He used the tone to create a small faction of dissenters that would cause issues, a false flag that we pounced on with the military. Then we positioned our forces and struck. Closing roads, detaining high-level administrators for their own good. We just told them that the military was protecting them from a plot from Josiah and I. They swallowed it hook, line and sinker and smirked to themselves that we were discovered and about to be destroyed. Their loyal soldiery, their bribed and bought thugs. They were here to save them. <laughs> Within three days, we had captured or converted every large element that remained. Nice. Everyone of note. We struck die-hard loyalist encampments with brutal efficiency, not wishing to drag out the confrontation. I did not really wish to execute everyone. Not really. Despite the propaganda issued, they were not rebelling. But Josiah showed me he had a steel in him that I was not really aware of before. While I commanded the military to remove any potential obstacles, he ordered the execution of the entire establishment. Oh. When we met the day after... They were simply gone. 
I had previously argued that they should be put on trial, that their perfidy and treachery should be shown to our entire world. I was shocked, it is true, but Joss explained it. How could we put these puppets on trial and expose them without attracting the ire of them masters? And we were not ready, not us two, not our military, not our population. We were not ready for a war with either the Confederation or the hegemony, again, let alone both. So he made endless noises of supplication to the Confederation, while I opened up back channels with the hegemony. We made them believe that our world was still split, but now all power was concentrated in just two hands. Ours. And it worked. It worked wonders. As we asked for higher and higher ranked members of the governments of the Hegemonian Confederation to meet with us individually, playing both sides, well, we gained control of them. My charm got many of them there. His tone then made them leave as true believers in the light. But on strict orders to appear and play the part out, and report to both sides that we were moving to become an enthusiastic and loyal vassal. We saw the efficacy of the strategy we had used to gain power on Homeworld and applied it to the sector at large. As we declared to both sides that our goal was a swift military campaign, a shock coup, we requested higher level military personnel as aides and advisors, with the officials we had dominated prior or greasing the pole, so that these men and women became available easier. We set our tendrils out into their organizations, and in only five years, we were ready to expand again. Josiah had been practicing his art. He had been training every day, increasing his power, his influence, his subtlety in his arts. He could now scan minds of those on remote messenger with him, could even use the tone on individuals thus contacted. He could now move objects, could create fields of invisible energy to protect him, and surface scan entire crowds for dangers. And it was this that allowed him to keep being out in public so much. He had to be in public to use the tone, but was vulnerable. Now, mm. assassins and agents of the powers were identified and apprehended before they struck, or their attacks were deflected by his special gift. People began to worship us as heroes of legend. It escalated, and some formed cults around us. The twins. I was always seen as the sword and shield, Joss was the just administrator, the wise leader, and together we were elevated to veneration. Amazing we duo. Move again. It took just six months for the last cells of resistance to be purged from the entire 140 plus worlds of the hegemony and confederation. The new order, our order, had a. But I will say, whenever you, I'm not saying that it will happen in this video, but whenever you have especially to people who are close. And, and this goes with just any duo. Some people have like a really, really strong bond like these two. Um, and others think that they have a really strong bond. And I'm wondering if, this, this is my um, four thoughts before uh, the video gets to the end. But when you have like this type of dynamic and how they're so different in their way of leading, um, which, I mean, they do have a very good dynamic, by the way. But when, you know, as they become very, very huge, and they even have cults based around them, uh, I'm just a bit worried that, you know, one thinks this is the right way to lead the country, or one thinks that this is the right way. And that type of mentality will like separate them and force them to um go against each other i've read books about it you've seen television shows about it it always happens but you know i'm not saying it's going to happen to them but i'm just i'm just saying i'm, I'm worried about it arrived we ruled now mm. so few lives have been lost and Joss was as able a civic ruler as I was a military one. We brought people together, made them see they had common cause. We regained some of our power and, with the entire empire working together, we as humans began to create our own vessels again. 
Mm. We did not rely any longer on the ragtag fleet of pre-revolt ships, as mighty as they were. Powerful, but so unfathomable, even now, beyond our ability to maintain. So far. For Joss wanted to build humanity anew, wanted to push forward again. We would simply find a way to control our technology this time. But the tone, his increasing powers, they made things smoother. Much. It was not long before our burgeoning empire expanded, and border wars became the norm. Mostly with alien races, but some human worlds also. I led the charge on each occasion. Joss stayed home to do the boring and grating but very necessary work of ruling. I was content. I married. We both did. Oh, nice. We had children of our own. His were like him. He secretly confided in me. Mine were like me. We knew our families would always be one, as we were. That's nice. And so on and on we went, expanding. We always remotely chatted whenever we could. He would use me as a sounding board, keep me involved, while I would inform him of the progress of the most recent wars. And that brings us to recent events. Mm -hmm. Of course you realize, you are now one of only two people outside of the Joss Imperial family that know of his talent. I stopped and looked at my audience. The captain's drink had been hovering in his hand for all the time I'd spoken. It was then slung back in a one jolt, and he refilled it to the brim before looking at me again. I put out my hand, and he refilled my own glass to the brim. After a hearty gulp, I continued. This is what Josiah wishes me to think, what Josiah believes I take as the truth. It's the reason we have dawdled our way recently. I needed to be sure. I'll explain. Since the death of my wife, the death of my love, mm. I have been near constantly on campaign. I did not wish to return to Homeworld, not if she was not there. It would be... It is still too painful. Mm. That was what my heart told me. It is the excuse I have been using. When she passed, there was almost an immediate insurrection, a welcome distraction for me. So I left after sending my daughter to development in the hegemony and my son to the Confederation. A unifying act, I thought. But I understand it now, whereas I did not then. I was protecting them subconsciously. As you know, I not only crushed the rebellion, but have since been expanding our borders, using one excuse or another to probe in strength and elicit conflicts to prosecute. But it was not only my mourning now. I did not want to return home because I wished to avoid Josiah. At first, it was because I was tired, was lonely, and I told myself that Josiah was so busy, had so much to deal with, that he did not need to worry about me as well. And if we spoke, he would know. His ability would make my mind and soul an open book. So that is how it began. I did not want to trouble him. As time went on, I realized it was not just that. Joss was building a brighter future while I was performing the dirty work. His wife was still alive. His existence seemed blessed. For the first time in my life, I felt I was jealous of my brother. Mm. I was green with envy of Josiah. So I continued distancing myself, so he would not be able to discern that either. I thought it would fade with time. Just one more campaign, and I would be ready to return. I would tire of war, and would be willing to forgive myself for my jealousy, and embrace my brother again. It would happen. But as weeks turned into months, months turned into years, his contact requests became more pleading. He missed me, he said. And he has attempted to recall me to Homeworld thrice this year. Yet he has always provided me with the reinforcements I have requested. So although he may worry, I actually believe he thinks I'm still under his spell. Yes. Joss, you did it to me. The longer I was away from him, the more his influence fell away. It began with dreams, 
haunting vivid images about places I knew people this story is insane I'm loving I had I'm sorry I had to pause it I was wondering if he um all this time all this time I was wondering if he was using his powers to overtake uh his mind well his friend's mind was twins mind like brothers I was wondering about it and I'm sorry, but that makes the story so much better. Oh my God. I was, I was literally wondering, I was like, did, is he under his mind control right now? Is that why he's pleading for him to come home because he can feel his powers, um, slipping away from his twin, his brother. And he doesn't want him to know the full truth about what's been happening because he's been away for um so long. So uh, I love I love stories like this, dude. I love them so much. Who I loved or hated, but always events that seemed so dark, mm. events that had never happened. I believed I was going mad at one point, but as the chronometer ran on, the dreams became more solid. Then finally. They began to burst from their shackles. They were not dark dreams. They, they were, were real? That yeah. That he had suppressed. They returned slowly and in order. It was then that my life story altered as my knowledge returned. Wow. I watched Josiah as a child. How he would manipulate much earlier than I previously recalled. How we shared a bunkhouse and I often found him talking to himself. Or laughing at a joke that nobody had made. When we grew, how the talking had become arguing, had become imploring at points, like Joseph was begging something inside him to be nicer, often about me. Oh. How Josiah had gained in power, but after each plateau jump, he looked exhausted. How he twitched. How he would seem to be distant and phase in and out of our conversations at time. He would seem like a different person after sunset. A person who I got to know again through my returning memories. And the pathway became darker still. He would talk of our people's cattle like fodder at those times. Even then, it had to do with his ability to read minds. The bright and breezy dreamer of the daytime was dying. As he read the thoughts, discovered the vices, the deals, the treachery of the ruling administrators. And the night time began to encroach on the day. Or more to put it, my brother Joss was becoming more cynical by the hour. And he was losing his war against what I would then consider his dark half. Strangely, though he would use the tone on me, he would get me to re misremember everything I knew. I always knew. My heart remembered what my mind was ordered not to. Mm. And I would make excuses for him if his influence wore off me. I would explain him away, would go to talk to him about his dark half, about his using me. I would try to discuss it as a brother, but he would inevitably always just alter my memories again. It was a dark half of Dross that ordered the executions of the beaten administrators. It was his dark half that would create rebellions so I had busy work, so he could then proclaim my virtue and ability. Also, I would not see that I was outshone by him as a star outshines a candle. So, in some way, despite his darker half, he still loved me as a brother. I have remembered many times, but not recently. Mm. His powers have grown, but his influence was dying, and his dark half was taking over, consuming him. Oh. And it was only two days ago that I got up to date. It had taken all of this time to clear the last secret he wanted me to forget. The one he knew would end our friendship. Did he have something to do with the death of his wife? Ah, uh, uh, I don't think that would make sense though because he would know that would drive him away and lose influence over him. Ah, uh, let me just, let me stop speculating. If it were ever freed, and it has taken me over six months just to get to that memory. Oh, just what is it? Just to unchain it? it in my mind. He worked so hard to contain it. Because of what he did. It's what he is. 
It's what happens on Homeworld when I am gone. What is become? He slew my wife. Okay. So he did kill her. But he've had he's had to have known that that would drive him away. He had to have known that would drive him away. And maybe that was the lighter. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe that was his good half that did it to. Maybe, I, I mean, I don't know, to drive him away so he can realize the truth. <sighs> because that was the only, that's the only unforgivable, well, what I, how I guess the wife, I mean, it's pretty obvious. That's literally the only unforgivable um, act that I can think of between their friendship. There's always the dynamic of a duo. Somebody always turns. It, I said it before. Somebody always turns, dude. And it's so it's so crazy how all oh, this story is this story is making me think. Uh, I don't. This story is just really really good. But I'm just trying to figure out like, did his good half slay the wife so that uh, he can know the full truth about? What's happening? That's the only... Well, uh, I'm pretty sure... I'm going to know why exactly, but... um, It's crazy. We both attended him late one night. He was drunk and summoned us. I was certain that his dark half would be at the helm, but could not dream of what he had become. As I said, he was drunk. His guard was down. Mm. We arrived and were seen through. The room was empty except for us and him, lounging over a couch surrounded by empty drink receptacles of various forms. He had been drinking throughout the day, it seems. He invited us to sit and offered us drink. We both took one, as it would be impolite to ignore him. While he sipped, he leaned forward and began to draw at us. How he detested seeing my Florana all over me. How mm. I should be loyal to only him. Yeah, jealous. He as he went on, but while he spoke, I noticed that his features warped and twisted whenever he was not concentrating. His eyes would change in size. His nose seemed to become distended and hawk-like, for instances, then snap back to normal. We sat watching him. My jaw was perpetually dropped. I was in such shock. My wife, my Florana, she looked at the ground. She could not maintain eye contact with it. He explained how he was more powerful than anyone could possibly imagine now. How he had made packs that had opened his eyes to infinite possibilities. He rambled on about the nature of reality. All the while, his face melted and reformed in front of me. Mm. Then he became more urgent, more excited. He was utterly unguarded. He said that he had that very day possessed his own son's body. How he would now be immortal leaping from one host to another for all eternity. But he still had concerns. He flat out stated that our children were a threat to him. He could make one, maybe two, disappear over time, but three, four or more, and things would become more obvious. He said that the brood mare would be his target. That would end matters. Then he ordered me to pick her up and throw her from the window of the palace behind him. Constrained as I was, I rounded on my Florana. Now she whimpered and begged, whispered that she loved me and forgave me, that it was his doing, not mine. I bodily took her and did as he instructed. Joss ordered me away from the balcony, so I was at least spared watching her impact. My beautiful Florana, the only woman I ever loved. When I returned to his side, he sat me down and ordered me to grieve. I wept bitterly as he sat beside me. I was shaking and sobbing. He whispered in my ear that his line was short, not robust, but was necessary. 
He would consolidate our lineages. He would have me marry his daughter after a suitable period of mourning. Oh. He would taller and better looking, more powerful sons on her. He would then execute my and his own sons. He would then have the both bloodlines in one place and a perpetual supply of new hosts for his magnificence. He would be immortal, and my genes, my flesh and blood, would be his armour, his shield, in the future, as it had been in the past. All the while, his face continued to twist and melt and reform again. Looking back, I believe my friend Josiah, he was the one who drank so much, before the switch over, before his dark half came out. I think he was trying to do everything in his power to make the monster within make mistakes. My only other option is to believe that it was Josiah behind it all, that he drank as he knew exactly what he wanted to happen, but let his dark half do the deed, like he had got me to do so many times. But that I cannot believe. So I believe that my brother Joss, he weakened it, made it sloppy, to give me the best chance of fighting it, either then or in the future. He was the one that dropped the cloak of lies that shadowed the horror his dark half had become. He was trying to warn me and help me. Wow. And the dark half of him gloated. It said what it would do to our world while I was away. Told me how I would breed him new bodies, then meet a very heroic death. Then he wiped my memory. Made me believe that an assassination attempt had taken my wife. I named it him and I but she had valiantly taken the hit and been thrown from the walls of the palace attempting to warn us. And then he pointed me at a system and let me loose. And so, here we are, Captain, on our way back to Homeworld, finally. I cannot throw up any more objections, distractions or subterfuges. I must return. But if... My, my one question, how do you protect... I mean, I know he knows him... In and out, in and out. But it's just like, how do you fight something like that, you know? Something that can just easily control your mind like that. How do you even battle against that? Is mm. if, if I see him even once, he will have me back in his thrall. Right. And it will all transpire as he has planned. When I say he, I mean the dark half of him. Mm. The evil that men do. I look at the captain. He nods. He knew what was coming. My plan. I always had a plan. <laughs> look, I have no right to ask, but I'm going to anyway. Do you want to end this? All of it. Do you want to help me kill a god? Wow. He drank again, lifted himself out of his chair, and went to one of the viewports. He looked out at the stars and spoke. Yes, I will. And I know what must be done. It's a real friend. I know friend. what you must do as well. The thing you are not mentioning, he said. I presume you will ask me to pilot the ship, set off a false emergency, and order an evacuation? I nod. I look down as he proceeds to the bit I did not want to discuss, but knew deep down that he would spot immediately. Alas, if the leader Josiah, if he has grown in power, he may not even need to see you any more. I nod slowly. And if he takes control of you, then he can get you to order me to slow or stop. And due to my links and mental interface, I cannot disobey a direct order from you. He finally looks back at me. Looks deep in my eyes as my head comes up. They could wear tinfoil hats to stop the interference. Uh, why did I say that? He knows <laughs> what I am asking of him. That was so I stupid, will do dude. It, if you will. Do you have the courage? I. For this. To end all of this. I do. Oh, it's not over yet. A 
I love the music in the back. Wait, I do. That was then. This is now. The okay. captain played his part, did his duty. He set off the alarms when we translated into real space. And within two minutes, the vessel was evacuated. Only he and I remained. As discussed, we did not make contact initially. Buying time. We had all gun pots open and were playing triumphal music across the comms as a very uncharacteristically splashy fanfare from my return. But I had never been away this long before, and it was accepted for the longest time. Time we used to eat the distance between Homeworld and the Mandeville Point. But as we continued to plow forward, the hells from them became more urgent. Our scans did their job, and the last irrefutable evidence was viewed by the captain and I simultaneously. He had done it. He had started the transformation of our world as he had stated he would. It was a horror, twisting and blending, shifting and swaying. A dream and nightmare made one and superimposed over the world of our birth. We were within range. So we fired all of our payload of missiles and weaponry as it cut through the void of space towards our home. The course was set. The distraction launched. I then turned and looked the captain in the eye. Sitting inside that macro seat with its delicate interconnected lacing over his brow so he could be one with the ship. He could not avoid me, even if he did change his mind. But I saw it in his eyes, the resolve. He did not flinch as I raised my sidearm and did what we had both agreed. It now seemed so hard. I pulled the trigger and he burst into flames. Our course now locked and with no way to countermand the orders. I turned back to the view screens. The missiles we launched were very specifically targeted, as intended. Many slammed into an invisible shield that enveloped most of our world. It could only be Josiah. His powers were now so great that he could sense them in the cold of space, thousands of miles away, and hold the missiles in place. But despite all of his power, it was still Josiah. And I knew him. I knew him so well. He always went for the obvious in games of, or activities of tactics and war. He never learned to be as subtle with weapons as he was with words. Thus a good half of the missiles that we launched swung around the other side of the planet. He also finds it hard to think in three dimensions, you see. So these missiles that did not head directly to the planet in a straight line just whizzed around and slammed into the other side, the side he was not shielding. The very atmosphere caught fire. I saw it rip around the planet, but I knew it was not enough. He would be safe from this in the bunker he had shown me on my last visit, weeks before that last fateful night of horror. And in all the excitement of the missiles, in all of their destruction, he simply misunderstood my level of commitment. Our fleets had always been so expertly admiraled by myself that there was never a need for defences on Homeworld and he thought that he was omnipotent, so was not concerned either. Mm. His final mistake. The dark half of Josiah was far less competent than he or me, I thought, as I witnessed my flagship cut through the atmosphere toward the bunker. That was such an amazing story. That just had so many element and factors in, in it. Um, but like I said before, whenever you have two leaders, I mean, it's, you know, it's inevitable. You're always going to have conflicting opinions about who's right and who's wrong. But if you guys can tell me um, a, psych, a psyker's tale. So he uh, decides a psyker. What type of, um, was it? What type of demon was he possessed by? Because it said as, you know, as a kid, he would let, did it turn out? Well, as he said, it started off as he was just talking to himself, laughing, and then it turned into arguing. Um, so I'm wondering, like, what type of demon was it? If you, any, if any of you guys know, or is it just up for interpretation? But that was sick. I feel so 
you often fight with yourself on how you, you feel bad. But I, I truly do feel bad for Josiah for having, like, knowing that he can't control a monster that's in him and actively overpowering him and taking over, and he can't really do anything about it, especially when that monster is hurting his very, his childhood friend. Like, This is such a good story. Such, such, such a good story. So many, so many elements and factors, dude. Killing the children, having his, having him marry his daughter and have kid, dude, craziness, dude. Absolute insanity. Holy crap. That was written so beautifully. I loved every single second of that. Every single one. I was, I think I was sitting up. I was literally on the edge of my seat this entire time. Uh, yeah, but if you guys can just tell me what type of psyker he was. I mean, are they, I'm pretty sure they're different types of psychers, but ones that have like a demon possessing them. If you guys can let me know for, just let me know if it's up to interpretation of, you know, what the demon actually is. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I did. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and a sub. Okay, and if you want to support me, you the link is down below, or you can head over and sub to my Patreon, and I'll love you forever. That's a promise. Uh, <laughs> I hope you all have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day, and that you guys stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.